Greetings, it's time for another Commands and Colors Ancient game. And um, we have now reached the year 406 BC. Uh, so we, will, we are still wading through the 5th century battles here. Uh, and we have lately been playing loads of Peloponnesian war battles. Uh, the year 406, uh, the Peloponnesian war still raged on. But this battle is actually not part of that. It's uh, uh, it's on Sicily, outside the city of uh, the the Greek city of Agregas, uh, also known as Agrigentum, to Latin speakers. I think many recognize that city uh, more with that name. But anyway, it was called Agregas by the Greeks, and. Um, yeah, and as said, this is this is fought during the Peloponnesian War. Even though we have Greeks here, so these are uh, Syracusan Syracusan troops we see here. We see here, um, well, along with loads of allies from the it's Italians and and also other from other tribes in Italy and Sicily. So what did led up to this battle then? Well. If you remember, we played another battle between the Carthaginians and Greeks, uh, Himera. Uh, this was really a long time ago. It's, uh, I mean, in years. I think it was, I don't really remember the year, but something like 480 or somewhere there, I think. And after that battle, um, well, the situation settled a bit between the Greeks and the Carthaginians on the on Sicily. Uh, Carthaginians mostly being on the left or the western side, better to say, western side of the island, and the Greeks are more in the center and eastern side of the of the island. And uh, during that time, while it was peace between. Carthage and uh, and the Greek states on Sicily. Well, there were other hostile things happening, like like usually the Greeks were battling each other on on this island. We have some colonies, uh, both deriving from Ionian Greeks and um, Dorian Greeks, and that was quite often a a reason for conflict and. In one of those conflicts that happened during two cities, uh, the Ionian Greek city, uh, who were hardly pressed by Dorians, actually asked the Carthaginians for help. And the Carthaginians decided to help those guys out. So they um, they entered Sicily with an army and uh, basically eliminated their opponents, the Dorian Greeks, that were included in that in that uh, specific conflict. I don't remember the name of the cities that were in battling there. There are so many, but it's not important here. Anyway, um, after that, well. One could maybe expect that uh, a big city like Akragas or or uh, even Syracuse would interfere because they are also Dorian cities, but they did not actually. So the Carthaginians could act kind of freely there without intervention from Akragas or or Syracuse, which is kind of strange uh, because they were attacking their allies basically. But maybe they were afraid of a of a conflict blowing up again, and also they were afraid, of course, to not get any help from um, the mother colonies in Greece because of the Pel Peloponnesian War. So uh, there were some factors uh, which I think explains why they didn't intervene intervene in the Carthaginian war effort on Sicily at that point of time. Also, I think the Syracusan fleet were away at that point of time. Uh, also participating in the Peloponnesian War. 
Anyway, um, the dust settled from this uh, conflict, but sometimes later there um, were a former Syracusan general uh, named uh, Hermocrates, and uh, he was actually in exile. He, he wasn't living in in. Syracuse anymore. He, he was exiled from there. I don't know why, but he was. But he had some ambitions to step back into the political scene there in Syracuse. So uh, he he wanted, you know, to uh, wash his name from the from the stains and and do something about this. So what he did on his own. Uh, by his own initiative, the other Greek cities didn't have anything to do with it. He raised an own army with uh, mercenaries and started to raid Carthaginian uh, village and villages and, and cities and colonies on Sicily. So he did lo loads of raiding there and uh, hoped that he would get uh, access to. Syracuse again by that, uh, by being favored. Some some of the Sicilian Greeks did like what he did, but the Syracusans did not. He he wasn't uh, allowed to enter the city anyway. Um, so he he later actually approached in in Syracuse, but got killed there. But that's another story. Uh, what's important here is that uh, the Carthaginians were of course put off by this behavior from the from the Greeks and uh, an um, expedition in, in, in revenge of that was planned uh, who, who were led by a man called Hannibal Mago and the Syracusans and uh, the people in Agregas they were expecting this to happen and they also expected that Agregas would be the first uh, target of that uh, Carthaginian revenge action against the Greeks in general. So both these city-states started to prepare for war on their behalf as well. And uh, yeah, later on the Carthaginian expedition led under Hamilcar Mago uh, entered Sicily and marched to Akragas, just like they have expected. And um, a siege were uh, conducted there, a long, long siege, um, and also an attempt to assault the city were, were done, but that did fail. They didn't manage to break through or, uh, and get into the city. So there was an ongoing siege happening there. Um, and, at, uh, and also, uh, at, at one point, uh, when, when the first assault was uh, not successful, Hannibal Mago did order uh, his men to ravage the, the countryside and also plunder the, the tombs and get all the stones they found there to build new ramps and stuff to to try to get up to the walls of Akragas uh, with help of those uh, tombstones and, and temple stones and so forth. And well, that was kind of seen as a bad omen uh, in the Carthaginian ranks. And indeed, a plague appeared and killed lots of men there. And actually, Hannibal Mago, the leader of this expedition, was one of the casualties. So the second in command, Himilko, who we see in this scenario, took command of this uh, besieging force. And the Carthaginians had split their army into uh, uh, into two parts, uh, checking both the western and eastern side of, of the city of Akragas by that. And, well, at some point a uh, relief force from Syracuse 
led by Daphneus, uh, were approaching Agragas and to attack the besiegers. And Himilko, with, uh, with a part of his army, rushed to meet them in a battle and, and intercept them, basically, and not let them disturb the, the ongoing uh, siege there against Agragas. So that battle is what we will play today. Um, in history, the Greeks won, uh, routing the Carthaginians who fled back to their bigger camp on the western side of the city of Akragas. Uh, and after that, the Greeks were not uh, able to <clears throat> storm that camp, so they were uh, so the siege could continue, but it was not no longer a full encirclement because the uh, Greek army were. Uh, nearby, or the Syracusan army were nearby, but um, later on, anyway, uh, actually, the, well, there was some supply issues on both sides. But in the end, uh, the supply to Akragas were cut off totally uh, by a fleet action, and the people of Akragas actually voted to abandon the city, and so they did. So. In the end, Himilko was uh, able to take the city, and that would become a, a Carthaginian camp for a long time after that. So that's the story about it. So uh, let's take a quick look at the war council here. So we will fight till five banners. The Carthaginians will would get five command cards and the Syracusans six in a normal game in my solitaire system. Uh, Syracusans will get three, and the Carthaginians will get two uh, cards. The Syracusans start, and as you can see, there are no special rules here. Uh, so, by that, and as you can also see on, on, on the scenario list, there's no terrain. Actually, they are not sure to this day exactly where this battle was fought. Um, but I think it's expected that that the Carthaginians were well. They moved a bit away from the city to intercept them a bit away from from uh, the siege site. So, but it's not really known. But it's still called the Battle of Akragas because it was in the vicinity of that city anyway. So. By that, I think we're ready to check out the forces on the game board and draw up some quick battle plans and then start play. Okay, so as you can see, both sides will duke it out on a plain field, no terrain. So, uh, this is a perfect ground for a pitched battle. So, who should we look at first? Maybe we should take a look at the Carthaginians first, who are the intercepting force here. But I think uh, well, basically both has both sides have uh, managed to array uh, quite a good battle order here, so it's not a surprise uh, interception happening here from the Carthaginians. The Greeks are well arrayed here. But let's start with the Carthaginian force. Uh, here we have there, we have another Carthaginian leader, that's he's also named Mago, um, but it's not, I think, Hamilcar Mago, not not um, the first leader of this expedition anyway, because he's dead at this point from the plague. But anyway, he's there, and uh, if we start from the from the right edge, we have in the in the background there we have some medium cavalry, we have auxiliaries. Um, did I say cavalry? I mean infantry. And uh, there we have some heavy infantry, some more uh, medium heavies. And continuing here to Hamilcar's command, here we have loads of auxilia, three of them, and then some light cavalry far out there. In the front row, we have some skirmish troops, we have bow uh, units here, and we have some light skirmishers or light infantry and on both flanks you can see here we have 
something interesting. We have uh, some chariots, heavy chariots here, and I think this is a, a weapon a bit out of fashion at this point of time, but apparently the Carthaginians were still using it, and I think they used it also later on, as we will see in a later scenario, but um, I think there are not many factions using these at this point in time. Um, you even have a sky down on the wheel, I think, on this picture. Uh, but there, of course, we will see some uh, uh, battles in the East, and of course, we, you know, when we reach Alexander the Great later on, the Persians, of course, used him. Galgamela is a classic one, but that's also another story. But anyway, we have two of these heavy chariots here, and they have quite some impressive stats. They attack with four dice, uh, defend with three, and can always ignore one um, sword symbol. But the weakness is um, there are only two blocks per unit. And let's see the stats of a heavy chariot. This is not from the, uh, the base game, but I think the stats are the same. So they move, no, sorry, uh, here with the heavy, they move two, uh, move, movement range of two, attack three, uh, three in defense and uh, ignore one sword hit and may uh, <clears throat> advance and battle again like cavalry here's also a good thing they can do evasion from foot and also elephants so that's interesting and as you can see it's a it's a, um, oh, a rather a mishmash of troops here, it's uh, and basically that what Carthaginian armies uh, always looked like. I mean, we have Libyans, I think these guys actually are Libyan chariots, and I also think, to be honest, that the heavy Libyan chariots were drawn by four horses, even though these are depicted with two. Um, and of course we have uh, we have Libyans, we have both uh, heavier and light infantry, we have, of course, we have um, Carthaginian citizens in this battle, and we have other North Africans, I don't know, maybe those guys are Numidians, the light cavalry there, not sure. I think we also have mercenaries from Italian mainland, we have from Iberia, and probably some uh, Celts here, or Gauls, or something like that. Uh, so, well, it's uh, it's people from everywhere, from the known world at this point of time, uh, taking part in this battle. So, what could we do as the Carthaginians? Well, well, we know the Greeks are heavier with a phalanxes coming up, but we are kind of kind of good. I think we want we want to maybe be a bit more on the passive side anyway. We could um, wait for the Greeks to come and hoping to get a good card to do the first assault. So if we could get the uh, get the line together, await the Greeks, maybe do some skirmishing in, in during that wait. And then, when they approach and we have the cards for it, we can do a launch and attack and get the first strike and even rush in without chariots, uh, at least hoping to get an exchange with those guys. They could damage some units here and before they get uh, plucked by, by the enemy. I think that's uh, the, the main plan I will, I will go for. And... Uh, I mean, the force is quite impressive. We have these heavies, we have a few uh, medium heavies, and we have loads of auxiliaries, who I have said that before, I like that, in, that troop, mainly because they are okay skirmishers, they move good, and still they battle quite okay. If they are adjacent or attached to a leader, they are really good, actually. I, I, 
I kind of like that uh, <laughs> that the troop type in this game, the auxiliaries. So that's the plan for the Greeks. Then, well, well, well. Uh, so we have Daphnius here in the center, and also we have another general on the right hand flank with some medium heavy cavalry and his name is Dionysus and uh, what can we say about this composition well of course as expected we are having loads of heavy phalanx hoplites here but I think would this be in a later a scenario in a later expansion we probably would have seen uh, these guys as hoplites instead of heavy infantry but for the balance of the game maybe this ne these guys needs to be heavy infantry here so uh, the Fneos and his hoplites here and basically I think these are mainly Syracusans and well there are other uh, Greek city-states here contributing to this force so uh, many from Sicily I think but also Italians um, so let's go through the force we have some light cavalry and then we have auxiliaries then we have a heavy so it's a kind of a separated uh, task force here it's on the left uh, with some heavy infantry and also some bow units in the front then we have if we want to call it the main line we have three heavy infantry units here really tough guys so if you can get these guys up uh, the, the game could be over pretty soon um, supported by some auxiliaries on their left here we as we saw we have some medium heavy cavalry um, and in front of them some skirmishers light infantry and the bow units and also that bow unit we already looked at so for the Greeks I'm just gonna try to get them up to the Carthaginians as fast as possible uh, advanced during skirmishing we have maybe a little edge in skirmishing because we have two bow units so we have the range on our side so we could maybe do some focus fire somewhere it would be nice to get some uh, hit some maybe those chariots because those can be pretty scary if we go uh, close in on, on, the, on them without uh, support and if they are in full strength uh, but otherwise I think uh, no complexity here we just want to get our men our heavies up to the enemy and decide the battle by that so by that i think uh, uh, we have done enough talking before the battle and uh, um yeah as you can see we have three cards for the Syracusans and we had two for the Carthaginians and the Syracusans will start the game. So let's do it right away. Um, so what do we have? We have two on the right, we have a line command and we have some light troops and I think I'll go for a traditional opening skirmishing because I really want to get some hits on uh, his chariots. Uh, for two reasons. First, they are very dangerous, I want to get get them and the second reason is they only have two blocks so they, they don't take that many hits so we could easily get some victory banners if we start harassing those guys. So, we have uh, six um, units to give orders to by this card. So I will activate some uh, light cavalry, of course both the bow units I will also activate these uh, light skirmisher infantry and we could also start moving up some auxiliaries and maybe I do it on this flank because if the Carthaginians doesn't respond here we could get more lights in to throw javelins against those uh, chariots so I think that's a good idea so, I will rush up these guys 
one, two, three. And so now they can throw one javelin. I will basically, I think, will move everything. So I don't need to mark those I have moved with and those not because every every guy will move here. Um, I just want to check one thing regarding the bow units here because um, if they move, okay, they can move to and still fire. But then they will fight with one die. Okay, that was the thing I wanted to check, just to be sure. So let's move these guys up one. Um, the guys in the center here, they cannot reach any of the chariots for fire, but they can put some fire on the enemy skirmishers here. So let's just move those there. They will fire. The skirmishers rush forward, throwing javelins, and these guys will move up in support. Not being able to battle, but they're gonna be in support here. That's what will happen. Uh, let's do the skirmishing fire then. So we start here and we hope to get um, a red or actually a flag would be really good as well because then we can force them back to the baseline there and they cannot do the rush let's see but we miss them so we might expect uh, them to go loose now and uh, let's take this one then fire those bows one die looking for a green nope Bow units against heavy chariots. Yeah, this is what we are looking for. So one hit there. Really, really good. Really, really, really important. Good bow fire. We hit some horses there, I guess. And then we have these light cavalry throwing the javelins against that chariot. But that was a miss. Well, okay round, but... Certainly not a good round, but an okay round. We, that was an important hit we got on those guys. Uh, but I fear we might see an, an chariot charge here if, we, if the Cartaginians have the card for it. Let's see. So they have light troops or counterattack. And <laughs> counterattack in this case means light troops. So luckily for the Greeks, they the Cartaginians cannot answer with their uh, chariots right now so they will just I will not use this yet so it will be the light troops for them as well so they will answer with skirmishing and they can order five units so let's see we will of course get those bovian units into um, into battle here Uh, really bad I couldn't get those guys activated, I mean the chariots. Let's take these lights, those, and uh, what else? Not sure if I want to do anything else. One, two, three. I could order two more. I was thinking if I could close the line there, but... Uh, would be nice to close that gap, but I will not do that right now. No, I think I'm happy with these three. And uh, I will stay put with those guys. Or should I? Could be nice to get a flag or something against that, but those are out of range for my bows. So if I move, I only get one die. So even if I roll a flag, they can retreat. So I'm not happy. So I will stay there and just fire at any of these guys. But these guys need to move. And uh, let's uh, let's see. 
I'll be a bit cautious and just move them one forward and those guys one forward. So let's start here where we have moved. So those guys will just show, uh, throw their javelins against the Greek skirmishers. No hit there. Those guys will throw their javelins against the approaching auxilia. No hit there either. And now maybe the best chance to get the hit. We have a two dice attack here. And I think I go for that guy who are in range of my chariot. I want to prevent those to get a full two dice uh, bow attack there. So we'll fire at them. And we missed them completely. Not the flag, not the green symbol. So not very good skirmishing by the Carthaginians here. Grab them a card. And it's time for the Syracusans. Two there, three there, or the line command. And pretty, pretty tricky because I would like to activate both flanks, but I can only bring one of them into action. I want to get that guy down because they are down to one block and I could get two full attacks with that card. That would be really really good if we can get him. On the other hand, here's the Carthaginians are threatening us, uh, our skirmishes now. So if we don't respond here, we will get the full volley on us next time. Even a, a chariot charge perhaps if the Carthaginians got a card for it. Um, so I am not sure who to, which flank to order actually. I will roll for it. So one to three, it will be this card. Four to six, I will uh, activate that card. It's a six, so it's this card. So we, the Greeks, decide to try to get that that bloody. Uh, chariot there and then maybe that's a wise decision and I can order uh, three units here so it will be those guys it will be those guys and uh, one of these two could move as well you know what I want I know I have a line command here so I will move these guys and join the line. So maybe I can get those guys into one block here and move up the hoplites eventually. That's my plan. So those guys will be stationary, but this heavy infantry will just join his fellows here. So now we have a four hoplite unit block here who can advance on the enemy. Maybe with that card. But we have some fighting to do first. And we of course start with the cavalry, because those guys, if we manage to get that, we can still fire at, some, at those bow units there. So the cavalry throws the javelins against that chariot. And we got a flag, but as you can see he is supported. Uh, so, and I think chariots don't have any special rules for support, why should they? Uh, yeah, there's no special thing. There's some. Uh, no, that's no problem. I think it's only elephants that don't uh, get any support from other units. So that was a miss from the cavalry. So we have to fire our bows at the same direction and try to get those chariots. Come on. No, we missed them too. Bad skirmishing here. I'm not happy with that. Um, kind of a wasted turn. Well, this was at least a good thing. So we give actually the Carthaginians a chance again to respond uh, with the chariots if they're lucky with the cards. So we have three new cards there. And now we see what the Carthaginians can, can do here. 
Okay, so they have the counterattack. That would mean three units there, or they can do a line command. I think I'm gonna spare the counterattack. Bad thing if I do that. If I activate the line command, I can only order the foot units, so those chariots will still be oh, in a bad position there. And I cannot activate those with that card. But with this card, I could activate them and even attack, you know. Um, damn it, it's hard to decide. I mean, the line command would be nice. I could join the full line here. So we have a long, big, nice line here uh, attached to each other, both Mago and Himilko. But that would leave my, leave my chariots, as I said, in a bad, bad position. Hmm. Tricky. Real tricky. Should I roll for it, perhaps? Or is the chariot too important to... Hmm. Well, I roll for the Greeks, so I will actually roll for these two. So it's one to three, four to six. Three. So we play the line command, meaning they just leave those chariots there, hoping they uh, will stay there unharmed for yet another turn. So we play the line command. So that would be these guys, these guys, these guys, these, and also these, and. Now we will attach here. So Mago and Himilko bring their troops together to meet the Greeks. And some auxiliaries. And some more medium heavy infantry. A kind of a response to the Greek assembling here. And these guys will not move, they will just fire away against that same bow unit as last time. Where they did completely missed at that point, but maybe we are more lucky now. We indeed were. We got two hits on them now, so we have aimed in on them now. Two blocks down, and uh, that's it. Good bow fighter. Those guys are really. We scared them really, really hard now. All right. So here we go, it's the Syracusans and their Greek allies again. Um, okay, we cannot respond here, so the Syracusans did maybe the right decision there to leave those guys, because we cannot get them really now. I will not uh, sacrifice a Lion Command card just to activate one of these bow units, right? So they are fine right now. So we have loads of activations going on here, I think we're gonna do that. The other option would be to start moving forward our phalanx, which is also very tempting, but I think we need to resolve the skirmish phase of this battle first. If things get a bit calmer there, we can start moving up the, the heavy infantry there. So let's play uh, two units right. And... Uh, We'll just skirmish away, I believe. Uh, those lights will, f of course, be uh, activated. And why not those who are in range as well? We could move up some guy here if we wanted, but... No, I, I will try to skirmish away some, some of these troops. Uh, and I will even, this time, leave the heavy chariots be, because I want to scare off the light skirmish guys here. Uh, because if we hit with those guys, you know, flags could be really deadly on those guys now. I mean, if we roll two flags, they are dead. 
and if you roll a green and a flag, they're also dead because they can only retreat two hexes right now and they need to retreat four. So let's see. You throw our javelins and see what the result is. Nothing <laughs> at all. So they are just, uh, well, maybe they are out of reach or they're always, these are elite uh, Numidians maybe and they are able to run away as soon as they see a javelin comes flying. Uh, we have another full two dice attack coming in on the enemy skirmishers. Let's see if they are luckier. Uh, well, kind of. No hits, but they force the guys to retreat. That's good enough because now they, they cannot retaliate with a full volley. So they go back there. It's two hexes per flag. No casualties, but we scared some of the skirmishers away. Maybe that's fine for now. Oops, and I dropped some cards. I need to fix that just a moment. All right, so now we're gonna grab another card for the Syracusans. And let's play the Cartaginians before we upload this video. So, counterattack meaning two there, or an inspired left leadership. The thing is, we have both our leaders in the center. <laughs> so we are kind of forced to play the counterattack now. Um, yeah, and maybe we should move Himilko um, to the left hand side of the Catatinian because then they can use this card next time and issue an order to many. Many troops there. I think I'll do that. So we must play the counter-attack, meaning we activate two units there. Uh, I'm sorry, he's in the center. I cannot move him. Okay. So we gotta wait with this still. Okay, but counter-attack it is, and I think it's time to do the charge now with the chariots. And I will also use my skirmish cavalry there. So I'll just be bold. I'll ride right into the hornet's nest here where there are loads of Greeks. And let's see if we can bring some devastation here. Those guys will not move. So we start with the skirmish fire. Two dice against that light infantry. And we miss them completely. That was not too too cool. Another thing is, who should we attack with our chariots then? Uh, <clears throat> those guys could just scatter and evade, so I will not choose them. Those guys are supported and cannot evade because they are auxiliaries. We have more auxiliaries here who are not supported, so I think I go for those guys because if I get flags, I can follow and attack again. And chariots roll four dice in in attack, so this is really good. So let's see. Uh, well, no hits, but we surely force them back like that, so we can move in here. And can't we move yet another space? I think we can. So they will actually move back here and attack the other uh, auxiliary there. And that's good also we hinder those guys from throwing javelins. If they want to attack here, standing here, they want they need to close combat me here. Otherwise they need to uh, back off and then throw their javelins. So we got four dice in a momentum attack against the other auxiliary there. So let's see if those can get, give no some effects here, yep. A bit better, we got two hits on them. But they were brave, even though they have heavy chariots crashing into the lines, they stand their ground and they will fight back with three, three dice. And we got one hit.
one hit on that chariot unit. So both chariots are now down to one, which I'm pretty happy for as the Greek player. Um, but on the other hand, we have taken some heavy losses already too. That Auxler unit's down to 50%. That bow unit after that impressive bow fire from the Carthaginians there, also down to two. And that's a, basically a, all that has happened as a casualties in this battle. So, pretty classical opening of a pitched battle, right? We are seeing uh, light troops skirmishing it away, and we are also seeing some chariot charges, just like it should be. <laughs> or maybe they should also Ah, to be more historically correctly, they should they should crash into some heavier troops. But I mean, this is auxiliary, so they are kind of semi-heavy. Anyway, um, I think as I said, I will uh, upload this and uh, we'll get back. I think this is an interesting situation. It's really hard to say who's gonna win this. I mean, if you look at the Carthaginian lineup there, it looks really impressive. It's a big fat lineup there with. Well, a mixture of troop and quality, but anyway, it's a really, really impressive line. More heavy on, on their right, a bit lighter on the left. And we have a not that big of a line of the, of, uh, the Syracusans, but those guys are not to be played with. These are heavy infantry. If they get the first hit up there, well, it could, it could go really fast. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching and hope you will be back for part 2 of the Battle of Akragas.